If you feel like you constantly spend money on the wrong things or make purchases you regret soon after, don't worry, it happens to all of us. This can be especially painful as a student where your income is usually pretty low. But don't worry, in my three years of studying, I found some useful tips to help prevent that and I'm gonna share them today with you. Okay, let's get started. First up, I wanna talk about consumption because that is the most important point here. So those are all the purchases you make from your disposable income. So in general, I think it's really important to consider before your purchase what you're actually getting back for your money. If you buy something that's just there to be nice or look nice or because you felt like it in the moment, that's usually a purchase that you will regret in the long run. That doesn't mean you shouldn't spend money on stuff or experiences that you enjoy in the moment, quite the opposite. It just means that you should be smart and think first whether or not you actually want that and you actually are happy about it. Let me give you a few examples. It can be very valuable to spend money on a night out to make social connections, for example, or it can be worth it to buy new clothes because it makes you feel more confident or upgrade your laptop because it enables you to get into programming, graphic design, video editing, whatever you like. But I think it's important to consider diminishing returns and actually compare which purchases will give you the most return on investment. For example, for the night out, maybe just buy one, two or three drinks instead of five, six, seven drinks. It's not only better for your health, but it will also save you a lot of money and you will still get the same kind of value in terms of the social connections you make. Or talking about clothing, I think you can get great basics at Zara or Uniqlo that will stay in style for a long time instead of spending your money on clothing that will be out of style very soon. And for the laptop example, you could focus on upgrading your tech when it doesn't do something that you need it to do or it hinders your workflow in any way instead of buying the new thing when it comes out and the company wants you to buy it. There are some useful frameworks to consider here. First up, if you think about buying something, look at it like this. Would I rather have this leather jacket that costs $300 or the $300? So if someone would come up to you and offer you both, which one would you pick? If you think you would pick the money, well, maybe then it's not the best purchase for you right now. Secondly, I think this is really basic advice, but we usually skip over it anyways. Just wait for a couple of days. Sometimes the urge to buy stuff will go away and you will realize that it wasn't really worth it in the first place. Another question to ask yourself is, if you were the only person on the planet, would you still buy it? This is very helpful to find out whether or not you actually want to buy something for yourself or to maybe signal something to other people about yourself. Another question to ask is, what negative does it remove from my life? In general, we as humans tend to be much more satisfied with purchases that remove negatives from our lives rather than adding positives. Let me explain. If you don't have a jacket right now and you have to freeze in the winter, buying a warm jacket will remove the negative of freezing from your life. Obviously, that will make you much happier than buying a new pair of jeans even though you have 10 already and it just adds the positive of a nice new look to your life. And last but not least, think about hedonic adaptation. Think about the baseline you set for yourself. If you get used to buying the latest iPhone every year as a student, what else is there to look forward to in the rest of your life? In the long run, it won't make you as happy anymore to get the latest iPhone. If you start making more money later in your life, it will be much harder than to find things that make you happy because your baseline is already very high. So think about what expectations you set for yourself as a student. Next up, I wanna talk about investing and whether or not it's worth it as a student. The first thing that usually comes to mind are stocks. And while stocks are great and can be very important for your financial independence, I think it's maybe not the best idea as a student. Obviously, this depends on your income, but in general, the contributions you will be able to make as a student are pretty low and will not really matter in the, in the long run. You can use an investment calculator to figure out how much your contributions could be worth in the future, but for me, I found out that it's not the best thing right now. In your current situation, you are very likely to be just a few years away from making much more money than you are as a student, so it will be much more valuable to invest some of your paycheck then instead of trying to make little contributions now. That being said, it can be worth it to get into the habit already, and if that's something you're into, I think it's not a bad idea. But that brings us to my last point, invest in yourself. Investing in yourself is by far the investment with the highest upside when you're young. Maybe try services like Udemy, Coursera or Skillshare to learn new skills that can be valuable later in life. Or of course, just buy books. That's probably the most ROI positive investment you can make. Just think about it. You could buy a book for $10 and it could literally change your whole life. It could literally help you build your dream career and live your dream life in the future just from that $10 investment if it's the right book. So in general, investing in yourself is just an awesome way to spend your money right now. 
The compounding effect of stuff you learn right now in your 20s is so high that no matter how little you make at the moment, I think it's so important to find ways to invest in yourself, even if it's just buying one book per month. Okay, so those are my tips on how to spend your money more wisely as a student. I hope I could help you out somehow with this video and thank you so much for watching.